let's talk about seven elements of weather so the the seven elements here are temperature sunshine rainfall cloud wind pressure and humidity let's talk about these one by one so the very first is temperature temperature is the degree of hotness or coldness and this temperature depends on numerous parameters how high i am in terms of altitude what is the latitude is it 0 degree is it 90 degree towards the pole and based on that temperature would vary definitely temperature would also vary if i am close to the ocean or i am away from the ocean what is the soil condition what is the wind condition whether it is day whether it is night what is the kind of um, uh, landform or terrain on all these features this temperature would be depending so if you want to understand this in detail we have covered that in separate lecture the next is pressure now atmospheric pressure in simple terms is the pressure exerted by uh, the weight of atmosphere on the earth's surface now anything that is there would exert pressure now this pressure varies with time and place so based on where i am what is the time and what is the location the pre the pressure would vary now this also occurs due to differential heating differential heating means the land and the sea let's take that example now wind movement would be caused because of the differential heating and this transport of the heat and moisture would take place and ultimately the pressure would be determined pressure is also determined by density and temperature now atmospheric pressure simply decreases as you increase in height so if let's say i am on the foot of the mountain versus i am on the top of the mountain at the top of the mountain uh, my atmospheric pressure would be very very less in contrast to when i am at the foot of the mountain similarly atmospheric pressure is also inversely proportional to temperature higher temperature means lower pressure lower uh, temperature means higher atmospheric pressure and this pressure is measured through barometer temperature as we understood previously is measured through thermometer pressure is measured through barometer so standard weather pressure we say is 1034 gram per uh, square centimeter and this is usually given at 29.92 inches or we say 76 mm of mercury column so those are the basic criteria based on which we have the pressure the next is wind now the direction of the wind affects the temperature winds usually move from uh, warmer areas if they are moving from warmer areas they would increase the temperature if the winds are coming from cold areas they would decrease the temperature so wind has a significant impact on the temperature of the region and is an important element now wind direction and speed of wind both of those are analyzed through the weather instruments which we would understand in the next section the next is humidity now humidity is the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere so this humidity humidity can be explained as either absolute humidity or relative humidity what is the difference relative since it's relative a related to b or a in contrast to b so that is always explained in terms of percentage very very important absolute is explained in terms of grams per cubic meters so grams per cubic meters would be absolute and what is absolute humidity if i simply want to explain it in uh, words i can say the actual amount of water pre vapor present in the atmosphere is what is absolute humidity relative humidity is the ratio of actual amount of water vapor present in the atmosphere to the total amount of air that uh, a given uh, parcel can hold at a given temperature so relative humidity is actual amount of water vapor divided by the total amount of air that is present in a given parcel at a given temperature so that is relative absolute is simply the actual amount of water vapor which is present in the atmosphere and absolute is measured in grams per uh, cubic meters however relative humidity is measured in 
परसेंटेज द नेक्स्ट विट एंड ह्यूमिडिटी इज मेजर थ्रू ड्राई एंड वेट बल्ब थर्मोमीटर विच वी वुड अंडरस्टैंड नेक्स्ट द नेक्स्ट इज प्रेसिपिटेशन प्रेसिपिटेशन और रेनफॉल नाउ रेनफॉल इज द मोस्ट कॉमन फॉर्म ऑफ प्रेसिपिटेशन देर फॉर वी से इट एज रेनफॉल हाउ एवर इट इज इन करेक्ट यूजेज प्रेसिपिटेशन सॉरी कैन बी under various forms for example snow hail sleet all of those are forms of precipitation so precipitation is water either in solid form or in liquid form which falls onto the earth surface now how we explain it this is simply explained as depositions of atmospheric moisture and therefore we say this precipitation is a important part of water cycle or the hydrological cycle so precipitation is important rainfall uh, which is the most common form of precipitation is measured through rain gauge which we would understand in the instruments the next is sunlight sunshine now sunshine is determined by what it is determined by the latitude you are based on whether you are on the poles or the equator places close to the equator or the tropical regions would have higher amount of sunshine day durations would have higher amount of sunshine in contrast to night and if the phenomena has haze or fog or mist it would definitely reduce the amount of visibility due to reduced sunshine so sunshine is another important criteria and the last important element of weather is clouds now clouds how are they formed any dust particle where the temperature moves below the dew point water starts to condense around it now this point is called as the condensation nucleus or the condensation nuclei now these condensation nuclei come together and form the clouds clouds can be white in color they can be gray in color and they can be further dark if they are moisture laden and would have a higher tendency for rain and these are called as nimbus clouds we would understand the types of cloud in a while but sometimes if the cloud is blocking the sunlight in that case the cloud would appear gray however if not the clouds would appear white and they would be able to scatter uh, light much more easily so that is about understanding the clouds now clouds can be classified under various ways so the first example is a cirrus cloud cirrus clouds are the highest clouds they are around 5 to 10 kilometers high they are feathery in nature and they appear like wisp of cotton the next is cumulus clouds now cumulus clouds are similar to cauliflower and they are having a vertical extension as well but they are also responsible in certain cases for lightning and thunderstorms uh, usually white to gray in color the next is stratus clouds stratus clouds are the lowest clouds usually up to 2 kilometers in height they are found they are like straight straight lines or sheets in the sky uh, usually gray and dull in color and then we have nimbus clouds now nimbus can be either nimbus stratus or Cumbo nimbus both of these are responsible for rainfall so nimbus are the real rain clouds these are usually dark in color and are responsible for continuous rainfall so here we have understood the seven elements of weather and their importance